Welcome back to the Minicom Show featuring Lenny. War Room Mock Draft, third edition. So excited for today's episode of doing these every week, uh, not just because I have my friend, you know him from The Athletic Football Show, you know him from Yahoo Sports, where he writes about football, you know him from this show, Nate Tice. Uh, I'm so excited to have you on, not just because you are my friend, you are incredibly knowledgeable about the draft, you understand the concept of this, which is I pick two for every pick, you pick one, but because I threw you a curveball at the last second, yes. and we are, in by popular demand, angry Vikings fans specifically, we are introducing trades. But because of the format, you have the option of taking or refusing the trade. Which How I do you like. feel about that? I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Thank you for that introduction. Yes, I can't wait for this. Can't wait for any curveballs you might throw and can't wait for the value. Which chart am I using? I don't know. We'll see. We're going quickly, so you probably won't have time to actually figure it out. But we are uh, one other thing, another uh, don't never say, let it be said that I don't listen to listeners and read comments because uh, Panthers fans also said, we're so sad. Can you let us have a pick? So we're going to actually throw in a bonus pick at 33 for the Carolina Panthers. Like, There's still a lot of really fun players available. Okay, Nate, I think this is going to be very different from the last two because of the trades and also because you have some different uh, different rankings. I've seen some of your rankings. They're all over. They're a little different. So are you ready ready to get started? I am stoked. Can't wait. Okay. 1.1 1. 1 Chicago Bears. Uh-huh. And I'm not proposing a trade because I don't think anyone actually <sighs> thinks that's going to happen. Sorry. Um, oh, and also crazy. because you don't have an option. It'd just be stupid. Uh, you get to choose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would have a quarterback, yeah. Kayla Williams <sighs> or Drake May. Nate, this is, remember, folks, this is who Nate is taking, Thank not you. what he thinks will happen. We all know Kayla Williams is going to be the first quarterback <gasps> Thank you for that disclaimer. So this is before I take a deep breath. And at 1-1, one, one, I walk up with this card and I take Drake May, quarterback, ah! North, North Carolina. <laughs> shocker, shocker, shockwaves. All my contingent from the Chicago went to USC's Pro Day. None of them went to North Carolina's, and this is why I still do. Yes, yes, Drake May. I am a big believer in him. I, I love Caleb Williams and I love Drake May. I think Drake May just has a lot to him. A lot of the prototypical stuff you want out of your quarterback, size, athleticism, arm talent, just about everything. Big fan. Uh, yeah. If I'm going with him one, one kind of want to see him in Shane Waldron's offense too. Let him drop back there and just kind of be even a more athletic Gino. Let's go for it. Do you think there's any possibility that that's Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not even slim to not none. <laughs> um, I really wish I could have you on. We could just talk about Drake May for the next 15 minutes, but yeah, we do no. have a, a task at hand. I also, by the way, though, I have Daniel Jeremiah on my podcast this week to talk about the quarterbacks finally. And he also, you, I feel like you guys are on Drake May Island together. Holding strong. And D Dane's on there too. Dane Brugler, who I worked with at the LA, he's on there too. He had him as number one for about a month and then switched back. So, but he was with me on that island and he got off. Okay, well, I am Adam Peters now of the okay. Washington Commanders, and I am stoked because Kayla Williams is available, and yeah. uh, I'm not going to put up a trade just yet, although I That's have to fine. think uh, that might be an option at Go two on. if, if yes. it were to chat. I also have Jade Daniels out of LSU. Okay, going with Caleb Williams, USC. Yeah, I think, yeah, this, both of these guys, May and Williams, are easy one-ones to me in any type of draft. But yeah, Williams is all the package. Everyone that's come on this show, everyone that's talked about him, I think his in-pocket stuff has been a little bit underrated, actually, which makes me very excited to see. Gets to go with his college passing game coordinator, senior assistant, whatever he was, Cliff Kingsbury. So we'll see how that goes in Washington. But I think this is an easy one-two. Also a DC native. So that's another uh, feather in the cap for Caleb Williams going to Washington Commanders. Okay. I love, that. I love that you actually write these. I think that's the best part of this. I should just talk, talk until you finish the writing. And then we're, we're doing like, a okay. real war room where, yeah. Yeah. You know, you need uh, the magnets. That's we're stimulating it. Um, yeah. Okay. The, now we're about to get spicy. Well, you've already gotten spicy. So this is the New England Patriots. Yes. Jaden Daniels is still on the board. However, the phone just rang. <gasps> it's Kwesi Adolfo Menza of the Minnesota Vikings. And he would like to offer you a trade. For pick three, which he will then use to take Jane Daniels, FYI, for Vikings fans who are wondering, if if Nate does it, he might say no. He is offering you the 11th pick and the 23rd pick from this draft, which we okay. know that the Vikings had. They acquired 23 in a trade and a future first next year's and a an, uh, poo-poo platter of second Matter. and third rounders in future years. So you're the New England Patriots. Your roster 
not in great shape, man. Fair. The offense is not 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 terrific. Uh, however, you might not be in this position again to take a quarterback. Uh, and we've seen next year's class is not as good. Do you take the offer? I just put up one point eleven and one point two three. Or do you stick and draft Jaden Daniels? This is this is a Drink. layered answer. Hopefully, I can make it succinct. I I think I, I'm going with the trade here. I am accepting the trade. I I, I think. <sighs> The Patriots are just not in that perfect situation to drop a young quarterback in, especially one like Daniels or even JJ McCarthy, if they were into that flavor. I just think that their ecosystem's not very good, not very conducive. Could be an interesting team with Jacoby Brissett and just kind of being fine-ish on offense, but not one I think there's room for growth. And I also don't think Jane Daniels is really Elliot Wolf's flavor. I think maybe he'll go for a little. Uh, he's a he's Ron Wolf's son. They like size. They like big guys. And so I don't know. Just maybe don't think he's his flavor. So he gets off that. Get a little better ecosystem. Get an offensive lineman or a receiver at pick eleven. Then we could just we'll start building this team up. Yep, I know. Just start building up. But I'm just going through their thinking. So yeah, you that's why I'm, I'm going with the trade. Also have a quarterback at twenty three. Just throw oh. that out there. That's another. Oh. I mean, maybe I'll, maybe I I'll that, yeah. maybe I'll throw some back on the table. It's so difficult because I think that the third path is you do you stick you take Daniels or Bay and then you sit him for a year behind Brissett. But the option of being able to use 11 and 23 and the future first and put your, your court. I think one thing I don't love about this for new England is I, I think Minnesota is going to be a pretty good team. Yeah. So it might not be that penalizing. Be in the twenties again. Yeah. But then you could just do something interesting with it. We've seen what other teams do with their two first and everything. So, you know, they can get frisky with it. Okay. Well, Speaking of getting frisky, <laughs> I'm the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Oh, I'm actually really interested for this one. Okay. I'm doing another trade. I'm What's the crazy. dice roll? I'm going okay, crazy go for it. Trades. Trade. Okay. So the options I'm giving you for the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Many, many needs. Yes, you do. Are Harrison Jr., uh -huh. Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, or trade with the denver broncos who are coming up to get jj mccarthy you get this year's 12. okay next year you get another one okay and probably another future first honestly right maybe like, first oh, yeah, or from second yeah maybe no no that's second. probably too rich okay so you're getting yeah. 1.12 you're dropping eight spots but you're picking up another first in the process okay. that, that's right yeah that's probably where that went that up do you take the trade no Going with Harrison Jr. Going with the blue chipper. I, I think it's just Directed. you can't. Yeah. The trade's interesting. And I yeah, I really like what the Cardinals are doing as a as kind of just as an organization. I'm, they're one very interesting team right now. I'm curious to see where this kind of goes. I, get this guy. Get a real needle mover. You already have a quarterback, Kyler Murray. So you have Trey McBride, Harrison Jr. Love it. So yeah, I'll just stick with it. I think he's just Marvin Harrison Jr. is the easy receiver one. Clean prospect. Clean. Big. An amazing route runner. It's it just unbelievable. I wrote about him on Yahoo. Kind of was great to go again. Watch like five, six games ago. Like, oh yeah, you're really good. This is pretty easy to watch. So love him with the Cardinals. Do you like his fit with Kyler Murray in particular? I do. I well, I can see or that I can see it a little before. Definitely. Yeah, the offense. Yeah, because it's it's how Andre Johnson was using that offense, or even like Julio or stuff. Because it's a Shanahan yeah. type of stuff. Um, so I mean, there's it's a little bit of everything. That's why I like about it. You see just like every type of offense in there. He's a true X. They can move him around. Yeah, I love him that offense. All right, pick five. And by the way, well, I will be doing a skills player draft where we talk about the receivers Ooh. and tight ends and running backs and such uh, in a couple of weeks. Okay, so you turn down the Broncos. But Sean Payton is persistent. He wants J.J. <laughs> McCarthy. He will do whatever it takes to get J.J. McCarthy. So he's on the phone again with the L.A. Chargers, who oh. now have to choose between that same trade package, essentially, 12. I don't know if there'd be a first, go from five to one, two. It's, it's in division two. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, That's so cool. maybe it's not next maybe year's first. first feels rich. Yeah, it all depends. Like, it's just like, all right, they try and beat somebody else for that spot. So yeah. then, and you got Sean Payton trying involved. to beat the Giants to get to to McCarthy, yeah. maybe or bump up. Yeah. Um. I don't, let's just say it's a it's a r -r 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 deal. Like, oh yeah, perfect. That worked out on the scale. Yeah, it's, a it's, it's a, a good, good deal. deal. Uh, it's a good deal. But you're deal. moving down. You're picking up. 
significant assets. You're yes. a bad, you're a team that, as I just talked about last week with Trevor Sikama, you need a lot of uh, pieces. Yes. Um, however, one of the positions you very desperately need is wide receiver, and you have potentially to get just boom, boom, fireworks. Malik Neighbors paired with Justin Herbert. Would you do this deal? Or would you? I would take the trade here, and Ooh. I would. I think the Chargers need a lot of stuff. Do they need a tackle? They need pass catchers. They need defense. Yes, they need it all. So I, 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 that's where I'm going with. I trade back, and they can get in that range where I still think they can find a lot of talent, especially at offensive line. They want to go tackle, which I think is what they should do. Uh, yeah, so I would, I would go trade back there, and then let's, yeah, let's talk about the other side because we're gonna we're gonna have the Chargers yeah. do something. Oh um, yeah, duh. I know. I keep focusing on why you. Would no, trade that's back. okay. <laughs> the Denver Broncos are uh, yeah. trading up for JJ McCarthy. How do you feel about? How would you feel about that in Sean uh, Payton in that particular offense? I think I think May was probably Payton's guy. If if I'm being perfectly honest, but if we're in this kind of world and those two choices, I, I think McCarthy makes a little bit of sense because he he'll chuck that thing over the middle. He throws well on the move and off play action, and that's what Sean Payton likes. He has some experience actually operating out of empty and quick game at Michigan, even if they've only drop back like four times a game, but he, he does it and there's experience. And I think Sean Payton would like that. And they've actually see that. So he does some certain things that Payton does. Like I actually like his fit there or hit McCarthy's fit with, you know, Kevin O'Connell with the Vikings better than Daniels for those teams because mm-hmm. of what they do well. Cause Daniels doesn't really throw over the middle. I kind of pigeonhole him with the Vikings there that makes, okay, whatever it's a quarterback, but like, I actually don't like that fit exactly just based on what they prefer and everything like that. So, but yeah, I think McCarthy with Peyton actually makes a little bit of sense, even if this is a little rich. Yeah. I, as you talk about it, I'll get into this later, but I actually, Daniels and Washington kind of makes more sense with Cliff Kingsbury. It does and, actually. I yeah. Know, like in the weirdest way. It. Yeah. And yeah, I, mean, I know that, that offense, just like putting him back there, slinging it around. I know. I, do not love the fit with that offensive line, though, but that's a whole other conversation. Hey, he's uh, one and done anyways. He's going to run, so it'll, it'll be all right. Well, the Giants are bummed because they're not going to take a quarterback. <laughs> um, we'll see if I bring back some quarterbacks later yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we wiped him out, though. I was taking him off your board. It's like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's, <laughs> let's get to the other spots. And honestly, if you're a Giants fan, you should still be thrilled because two amazing wide receivers are on the board. Yeah. And it's such an area of need for you. Uh, and, um, so we, we got Malik neighbors back, uh, yeah. but I'm adding Roma Dunze, who I absolutely adore. Yes, I do too. Yeah. Uh, now I want I you to think about- sweatshirt on, by the way. Opening I know. Day. Yeah. Day for you. It's, it's that opening day. <laughs> so, uh, I want you to answer this question, not just talking about the receiver you like, but also like the receiver you like for the giants. In yeah. That is what's tough here. Is yeah. actually, I prefer Ndunze. I, I think these both of these guys are top 10 guys easily. I, I think they're so talented. But for the Giants, I actually like Malik Neighbors yeah. uh, because of his skill set there. Yeah. It, even though he is more of a slot guy there, just the explosive ability. Like that, that's just it. And that's what they need desperately. I think Ndunze is a more complete player. I pr- just prefer him. I pr- prefer his play style. Uh, I think he's. He's sick, <laughs> but neighbors is too. Uh, but neighbors too is that I, I just, they need that in their offense. They need it so badly. Someone can win on the outside, somebody that can take one play to the house or take the top off the defense and help everybody out. All one of their 20 slot guys. And now picture him and Jalen Hyatt, you know, just taking the top off the defense. It's actually kind of interesting. Yeah. I am in agreement there. I, I think with the receivers too, honestly, it's so like, what do you need? You know, That's with it. these three guys. Yeah. Labor. I, I'll get into it in more detail, but they're all awesome. Um, they're okay. Awesome. I know. I know. I keep waiting. Like, I was trying to like, get some difference. I'm like, I, and someone that has other arguments, I'm like, yeah, I see it. Like, yeah, totally get it. I like him too. It's just yeah. hard. To, it's hard. It's great for us. Like, we're going to get to enjoy it. It's gonna well, be awesome. I mean, Dynasty that league's going to be awesome. That brings, <laughs> yeah, right. That brings me to the Titans. And this one is just dumb because it's like so obvious and easy. I, I almost just want to write one name. Uh, I guess sure. I'll throw three letters too. It's easy. I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Here, okay, let's be weird. I'll just be weird. Is that the shortest name in draft history? Oh no, actually, there's one shorter here in this actual oh, draft. One... Bo Nix is shorter. Well, His name's actually Bo too. Bo Nix. Okay, well, it's Five it's we got Joel <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the time. Oh, that's a good. I love your alternate. But I yes, yeah, yeah. so I I wanted to be spicy, and I threw up our Marius Mims out of Georgia because I love that. Um, he might have higher upside than any yes. offensive tackle in the draft. Uh, but the Titans could not have a more glaring need. And yeah. also just 
God, Titans fans, this could not have worked out any better for you, this draft. I just want so great. This whole offseason, even yeah. this makes the Calvin Ridley thing go like, okay, now you don't need a receiver. Like, absolutely need one. Right, because I would have kept Odunze, if not. Yep, yeah. and it yeah, becomes an Odunze question here, which is so hard to pass up. But Joe Alt, it would be my answer here because, yeah, left tackle from Notre Dame, uh, young, ascending player. I wasn't as high of him going into this year. Dane and I have talked to us a few times on our show on Prospects of Pros, but now he's developed like crazy. Like he's just ascending. So young, former tight end. His measurables are the same as freaking Jonathan Ogden. So it, it's kind of not a guy that you usually throw out there. So Alt to the Titans has been like one of the easiest pairings, I feel like. Love your Mary Smith's. Shout out though. So can't wait to talk about him. Okay. I've got a total. You seem excited. Mind. I can I've tell you're excited. I've got a mind F yeah. for you at eight. This is the Atlanta Falcons. On one hand, you need pass rush. Everybody knows that you need oh, pass I rush. I have do. talked about this. It is so obvious at eight. You will probably, I would be shocked if you do not have your pick of the top pass rush. The top defensive player on the board. Yeah. On the other hand, Roma Dunze, Drake London, I, Kyle Pitts. I want, I want this. I wanted Dunze so bad there. Oh. Do you, it's like, do you do the smart thing? The smart or thing you, or not. Or do you do the sexy thing? I've already been spicy enough. I'm going to go with Dallas Turner. And I, I'm going Dallas Turner. Edge, Alabama. I'll do all of it. DN, outside linebacker, whatever you want to put him. I actually like Dallas Turner's fit, like with Raheem Morris's defense, like perfect fit. It's not Michael Hoyt doing the, it's, it's the Michael Hoyt role, but it's not Michael Hoyt. It's Dallas Turner. Who's longer, faster, twitchier, great against the run. Can he can just do a lot? Well, he's like Bruce Irvin. I, I know you have experience with as a Seahawks fan and it's, Bruce kind of could drop into coverage. He could rush the passer. He could play the run really well. It might only be like an eight sack guy, but I think he's just can create pressures and just be a useful player. I actually like his fit a lot to Atlanta. Yeah. That, I, that's he's, I think he's gone to Atlanta in every, it's, one of these all to Titans and yes, and, that's and, the yes and, and Dallas and it, to Bama or to, to the Falcons. It's useful because nine is you can go in literally every direction possible yeah. except for like two for the quarterback for the Chicago yeah, Bears. Yeah. Give me give me the one. I'm gonna I'm throwing you another curveball. Oh, so nice this tree. is I, I just feel very spicy day. I'm leaving Odunze obviously. Yeah. I'm adding back oh. Mimps. And I this means that there. you do this if you're like, hey, we've got good skill players, we've got an ascendant offensive line, but we think we can upgrade on Braxton Jones at left tackle. I, this is something that is kind of being left out, I feel like, of the conversation, but there's a, we want a superstar left tackle to pair with our superstar young quarterback. We want them to grow together. So I'm just going to throw him back in the mix. I, I I love your thinking. I like Braxton Jones, but he's like he's more like a fine starter as opposed to Amarius Mims, who could be an all world beater type of left tackle. I am gonna go Roman Dunze. I know, but it's and you yeah, know, I would, Ryan Poles, Ryan Poles is gonna emphasize the trenches, I think. So it's that's another thing with this. But and Dunze is just a oh my god, just inside outside receiver, can block, can do everything. Nice little bridge. This is the thing I think gets lost too, is like everyone's like, Oh, they added Keenan Allen, they don't need to add another receiver. One year deal, 30 something year old Keenan Allen. This is a bridge. This is so Dunze, hypothetically, wouldn't have to walk in and just, okay, eat all these targets and do all this. It's, it's, you add, you create uh, a whole room. It's not just one player, it's a whole room of receivers. So, yeah, I would love a Dunze with that, <laughs> especially with Drake May in this hypothetical fan fiction I just created. Yeah, all, all aboard. Choo choo. Okay. <laughs> um, so for the Jets at 10, all the receivers are gone. That would have been an option. Mike Williams, we got a one-year deal. So Don't. this is a Brock Bowers spot. I am not going to put Brock Bowers on the board. I am going yeah. to do what I think is the smart thing and put two offensive tackles. I know I that you know they it. have Tyron Smith, but health, and it's a one-year deal. Yep. It should be an option for them. Morgan Moses, who they traded for, is an older veteran. Yep. So uh, I'm leaving Mims. I'm going to put Olu Fashanu. I don't know how your <sighs> offensive line really rankings stack up, but obviously yeah. – uh, so we're we're going to both tackles here. That's tough. Who I know you. Get? All the receivers are off. So Aaron Rodgers, the GM, is kind of like, oh dang. All right, Bowers. Thought, I mean, the, yeah, Bowers. Bowers. I know that's right. That's a tough pairing right there. I actually thought you were going to go maybe J.C. Latham there. I really like him from Alabama. Uh, I'll go Fashanu. I I really like him. Just watched another game. I've realized that. Mm, I think he's become not, underrated. I have like too. in this uh, process. Yeah, he was hurt. 
And that's what I think has been kind of underplayed through the whole second half of the year. I was watching a Ohio State game, which he was not good in, and it scared the crap out of me. And I was like, oh, man, I've been hyping this guy up as like a top five guy, banging the drum, banging the drum. And then I watch, he has a knee sleeve on. He's And then I could see he's just not moving right, but, man, he's a really talented player. Just like the Keenan Allen thing with the Bears, have, signing and trading for a vet should not preclude you from adding talent to that position that's so hard to find talent at. And this is a chance for a lot of teams to add like a blue chip offensive lineman, which is, I think is just so hard to do right now. Agree. All right. I love that. Um... <laughs> I think they like, uh, they like Telly's uh, Fuaga though from Oregon state. Yeah, but I was, mm. they like him. So I, <laughs> also, his name got paired with them really quickly after the Senior Bowl. It was it, it was it was quick. I think it was after mm-hmm. day two. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, that would make sense for them. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've got the Patriots at eleven now. Yeah. Remember, they have eleven and twenty three in this draft. Um, yes. Eleven. It's in that spot where you've missed out on the top three receivers. It's too rich for the next round receivers, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you two tackles. One could be a guard. I'm going to put Troy Ooh. Fatnu from Watch UW on Ooh. the board. And then I'm putting Mims back. I, I you See, I want people to know I love Mims. But. I'm, have I been too high? I think he, dude, he looks so him. good to me. He <laughs> has. I have him. Where is he? He is high up there. He's the 11th player on my big board. The problem is. Fatnu is the 10th player on my big board. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just because he has five position upside. I really yeah. think that I think he could be a good starter or better at five spots. The Patriots need starters. Like they need actual, his, his floor is high, but I think his ceiling's higher than people realize he has long arms. He just doesn't look like a tackle because of his height, but man, I could, I think he could start easily at right side, maybe left side, but then the other three spots, Michael jr. And I were talking about his, his kind of, his <laughs> looks like a center's like he just like he has a build <laughs> that looks like a center's build and we both said it at the same time as we were texting each other and we lost it because we both agreed to on that but i just think the patriots need starting offensive linemen he could be a high end one for them for a long time i'm i'm a big fan of it okay so at 12 you remember it was the chargers it was the broncos they traded mm-hmm. up this is where the chargers are picking uh similarly to the cardinals uh, and the chargers could take pretty much every damn position yeah um I have, I think that they would be pretty happy with this because I'll put two players. Uh, Fuaga still there at right tackle, and then oh. uh, I threw up Quinion Mitchell. So you have the opportunity, you because this oh. yo this Chargers defense needs players. They need Just youth. Starters. They need speed. They need starters. Yeah. Uh, corner is rough. So <laughs> uh, and 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 the right tackle is it's tricky because they yep. actually like. Pipkins can play, you know, so it's not at, it's not as bad. But your potential here to really upgrade at a position that we know Jim Harbaugh values. So are you going to go Fuaga yeah. or Mitchell at twelve? That is that's a I love that you went defense there too because I thought you were going to go somewhere else. I I think Fuaga is the answer here. Even if I have Mitchell higher on my board, uh, Mitchell's my number one defensive player on my big board actually, which I did not. I, yeah, I knew he was sending really? this process. He tested his senior bowl testing was like, yeah, yeah, he looked always looked like the best player on the field in the Mac, which is great. That's what you want to see at a kind of mid-major guy. And then his testing showed, oh yeah, that's what an elite NFL athlete looks like when they play in the Mac. That's that's what he looked like on film. So it was kind of cool to see him confirm it. But I think, I mean, just listen to Harbaugh's comments, his team building strategy from day one at every spot he's been at, even back to University of San Diego, is offensive line. So I think he's gonna go Fuaga. Try him at right tackle. I think he has guard upside as well, but I think that gives him a nice two-way answer. They, they get their best five out there. Okay, the Las Vegas Raiders at 13. Not going to take a quarterback. Don't like the quarterbacks for this value. A lot of needs on this roster. I mean, offensive line, almost every position, but left tackle you could go to. Uh, corner um, is the other obvious need, so I'm going to give you one of each of those. I'm going to give you put Quinn and Mitchell back on the board, okay. and – going to throw up our Marius Mims again. Finally, you can take Mims here. I'm really? going for it. High upside, size. Al Davis would love this. He he would love this. Um, at first, I thought you were going to put AD Mitchell in there and just be like, yeah, that would be a real classic Raiders, Raiders pick right there. But no, I yeah, Marius Mims, I, I think just, again, we've kind of touched on it. One of the most unique prospects you'll see in recent memory, an offensive tackle prospect that has eight starts to his name. But 
height, weight, speed, upside, even his tape right now, he's not as big of a project, I think, as people are making him out to be. Like his film and tape, you already kind of alluded to it, is like, it's way more polished than you would expect for somebody that has eight starts to his name. Uh, but yeah, he has as much upside as I think of anyone in this draft at their position. Like he, this guy could be a all pro type of tackle for 10 years if he develops and goes to the right spot. So yeah, why not go to the Raiders? Screw it. They love this stuff. I, I think he's actually, that'd be a lot of fun yeah, there. These offensive tackles are flying off the board because I was trying to find one for my next team and there we are like running out of them. Uh, Did you this- them in there? there yeah, well, that that is who I have. So uh, <laughs> thanks. Oh, we did oh. just learn that Ryan Ramchick might be out for the season. Like, yeah, that's crazy. so sad, man. Super yeah. Sad. One of the greats, uh, great right yeah. tackles of all time. Um, tackle generally is a need, though, for this team, regardless. Um, however, two really good edge rushers. Uh, I actually like Latu more than Verse, but Verse makes more sense to me for the Saints, given yeah, their uh, like. types. Yeah. So yep. uh, we Edge is another <laughs> massive need on this team they did sign chase young to a one-year deal cam jordan's obviously getting up in the air so Mm -hmm. this is i think this is a really difficult decision it is that's funny for some reason how you said type it was like you're like beating around the bush about something you're like they (laughs) they like a certain type of player quote unquote big strong strong, push the pocket yeah versus like ideal for them i think they go line I think they go JC Latham, even though I, I really like Latham. Uh, uh, he's my tackle three. Um, just I'm really, over, yeah, I have him as my eighth overall player. I, yeah. I love him. Uh, I think he's he because he's built like a guard because he's so big. I have my lines that I've used is that he's built like a globe. Um, and, and but he moves like a true, true tackle. Like I think his footwork, I think he's the best run blocker in this draft. I, I think he's so strong and he, and he can adjust. He's not again, a, just a mauler type that falls over himself. If a guy moves, I think he's a really good athlete. He has pedigree. Like it wasn't like this guy was just some, again, a sloppy body that got, he, this guy has been a highly recruited guy. IMG Academy guy. So I, I just really, really like Latham. And if, okay, maybe if he does start out at guard and then kick to tackle if Ramchick goes through this year, okay, that's, they need their best five out there. And the Trevor Penning experience has probably gone very sour. It's gone very Willy Wonka on the river. For them so far <laughs> i love the choice I've, i'm presenting you with i think a true sophie's choice for the indianapolis colts okay okay so everybody knows colts need a corner colts yes. were in the mix for legerious Sneed. you could i mean you know kenny moore's at nickel but the outside corner rack room is not good quinn mitchell we are putting him back on the board he is your mm-hmm. corner one but Brock Bowers is available and they oh. also need a tight end. And okay. this is not a great receiving room, in my opinion. Yeah, and no, it, we want to help our young quarterback, time. Anthony Richardson. And who loves his tight ends? Mr. Shane. Yes. Just watch how he used them last year. So I actually, before I was even on this, I was going to joke. Can we have the Colts and the Rams trade? So the Rams could trade up to 15 for Brock Bowers. And mm-hmm. so the fact that you put Bowers here at 115 is killing me. I'm going to go with Mitchell. I'm going to go with Quayon Mitchell. I wanted that. I want that so bad. I want that so bad. But no, that's, I like that choice though. Actually, now that I'm really thinking about it, it's like, that's actually more of a realistic pairing than maybe I thought going into this. That's good. The Bowers one, I mean. Don't you feel like all the other young quarterbacks, everybody's like, God, I'll be a young quarterback. And with Richardson, it's like, what? We're running it back. We're running it back. I know. know. Where's the juice? Yeah, you know, where's the meat? I know, and, and Bauer, they do Bauer need Mitchell. Makes, they do need they need a corner. They need a really. corner. I, I Juju Brands had decent year as a second round rookie, which surprised me. And so, yeah, but they need somebody. Like, name the other corner. Anybody listening to this right now? Like, it's, I think it's a seventh rounder. Like, doesn't have a lot of pedigree there. And Gus Bradley likes height, weight, speed, length, all that. Like, yeah, I, I think Mitchell. I think Mitchell could have real, real upside, especially in that type of defense. But man, Bowers there. Now you got me thinking. Can you just save him for 119? Sorry. Too late. We'll see if he gets past 118. Huh? <gasps> um, okay, so this I'm going to give you an interesting choice, I think, for the Seattle Seahawks at 16. Two players that I have not mentioned, and I actually haven't mentioned. No, actually, I'll throw back one that I have mentioned. And this player, one of these players has gone to the Seahawks already. So we got Byron Murphy making his debut on the list. Some people have him as their best defender in the draft. Um, yeah, he's fun. I'm a huge fan of his game. Bringing in Latu now to rush the passer. 
opposite because the Seahawks, it's funny because everyone is linking Murphy to them and I get that to some degree, but you did just pay Leonard Williams. You have Jamon Jones. You have a very expensive IDL right now. Edge is a serious issue for them. So I think Murphy is probably higher in most people's big boards than Latu. I don't know if that is true actually. But no, I'm he generally a is, big yeah. Latu fan. Oh, that's hard. I actually thought I, I put I gave them an offensive lineman in my last one. Yeah, I I, I raced Graham Barton and rode in. Latu. Oh, Barton would have been I would have ran up. I'd have been like, oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nice. Yeah, Latu's fun. Whatever, Barton. Oh, I am gonna go Murphy because even if that is a very expensive and a very a lot of resources to that position, I also think that he's a different animal than those types of guys. The, the guys that they have already. Um, he's a gap shooter disruptive guy leonard williams you know plugger type same with jones they're both plugger types two kind of so and you know your new head coach really kind of likes kind of hybridness to his defense he doesn't it doesn't seem like he has a preferred type he kind of just like yeah i got this and i got this so to me that's like hey we'll just take the talented guy and then hopefully he becomes mad bk for us and go from there murphy's fun i this is a i i've been i have him like around like pick guy where am i at he's 20 on my big board and so I've been try- trying to find like that perfect range for him, but I think this is right where his kind of his range will start is right at the Seahawks. Mm, Brock Bowers is falling. His fall will continue because the Jacksonville Jaguars do not need a tight end. They need a uh, corner receiver safety, maybe offensive tackle. I'm giving you two corners here. Thank you. Oh, oh, good ones too. Darian Arnold and Cooper DeGene, who might also have safety versatility in this yes, defense, and which slot and everything. Yeah. Needs it. Uh, this is a defense. Quick note, that is making a transition. New yes. defensive coordinator, Ryan Nielsen, coming over from the Atlanta Falcons. So it'll be slightly different from what we saw. Uh, do you think he'd have a preference between these corners? Do you have a preference? I think he likes feistiness in his corners. I don't think he has a size thing. You know, he's a Saints guy originally. Yeah. He did. I think we're both in agreement. He did amazing Excellent. stuff last year with, with the Falcons. So I think he he was, uh, yeah, I had me clapping like a seal. Yeah, I think DeGene actually is a great, Ah, hold on. Hold on. I really like Cisco. They say they're going to use Savage in the slot a little bit, which is interesting. I just made the face I just made. Uh, <laughs> I'm such an apologist for Savage. I'm like, he's good. Just give him a no, chance. No, I, know, no. I know. I know. I know. I know. I get me fun of for it all the time. I'm going to go to Gene. I'm going to go to Gene. Originally, I was going to go around, oh. but I'm going to go Cooper to Gene because of the versatility he mentioned. I think he still can start on the outside, like as a pro. I think he's, I could think just like we talked about maybe Barton or Fontenu, uh, Fatanu. I always say Fontenu, Fatanu. He actually grew up right down the road for me. Uh, I know I, I have, I got, I've, I've like praised him for like nine months and got his name wrong the entire time until this week, but that he lets you get your best five out there. Okay. We start him at safety, maybe down the road, he's our slot or maybe down the road, he's our outside corner, but I think, and he's a good blitzer. He's pretty good against the run, smart player. Really? He's more, he's super athletic. His dunk highlight tape is awesome. If anyone wants to check it out, YouTube it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with them, DeGene. Okay, I'm the Bengals, and I am stoked that Brock Bowers is still available. <sighs> However, I also need interior pass Cheers, rush guys. and Johnny Newton, who is a player I love from Illinois. Oh, this is tough. three tech. Bengals, like the Bengals Twitter, this is like their two babies, too. Is like, it? Are, I haven't seen. The, okay, so I, they must be happy with I mocked them, Johnny Newton, like a couple months ago, and you would have thought they they won the Super Bowl. Like people were just like, <laughs> yes, that's the guy we wanted. Yeah, Nate, way to but, go. Bowers. But Bowers. You mean you don't like Mike Kosicki there? <laughs> I'm going Bowers there, even though I want him to fall to the Rams. I uh, But I'm going Brock Bowers there because I actually like that. Gives you maybe a, he's a power slot. Like he, he, he's a, he's his own thing powers. He's not a receiver. He's not a tight end. He's his own thing. You know, that offense that kind of is going to go through a little metamorphosis. I think the next year or so Yeah. Tyler Boyd's gone or get him in there as you're kind of slot now and move him around. Now you get opened up some, the two man game with him and chase would be sick. So yeah, I, I'm going to go Bowers there. Even if they don't use tight ends traditionally this way, he's a different type of animal than a traditional tight end. Is it? How are Verse and Latu still on the board for every the- mock I've done? This is what keeps happening. I, I'm I, so mad right now as a Seahawks fan. Um, trade back in, John. What the freak? Um, okay, well, all right. Damn it. Okay, Rams. Well, yeah, you get your you get all these amazing defensive linemen. Uh, I'm gonna leave up Newton. Okay. 
right? Because uh, Aaron mm-hmm. Donald uh, did retire. Uh, did. So uh, they do have very good defensive tackle in Kobe Turner. They have young Byron Young, but mm-hmm. Edge is also in need. Uh, I put up Latu over verse for them. I'm going to go Newton uh, because of just the – he would – obviously no one could replace Aaron Donald, but he would fit that type because um, kind of how, how Kobe Turner is. No, he's more of a – even though he had all the sack numbers, he's more of a traditional kind of big guy, big interior defense alignment. So you get a nice little two-man game in there. And I think you just mentioned him, Byron Young. Like Latu and Young would kind of be a little too samey, even if Latu is, you know, just their role, I mean. Um, even if Latu maybe has a little more pass rushing upside because of all the stuff he can do. God, he he has like 400 moves. He does. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. He's unlocked, isn't you know, like an RPG. Uh, you play yeah. video games with your brother. We talked about it. Yeah, you know, RPG, kind of all the stuff. He unlocked the entire tree. That's what he's done. With he has all the buttons. Yeah. He did. He maxed them all out. Every combo, he maxed it out. But yeah. It's really crazy to watch for a prospect too because it's so many prospects. It's like speed to power, long arm, speed to power, bull rush, and lot two. Meanwhile, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, okay, my big takeaway from this exercise is if you need a defensive player of the draft it is amazing because so many tackles are going mm-hmm. and really by the way now too if you if you once you get out of the top three of receivers near the end it's going to be really exciting but we're not there yet the Steelers um oh we're actually they there. do need a wide receiver <laughs> hold on we're getting into the area oh man get our boy Arthur and um ah oh, he's such a similar skill set oh Pickens yeah, I mean, I feel like I know who you're going with. Well, that's one of two guys. Yeah. Okay. So I'm putting up Brian Thomas Jr. here. They desperately need a wide receiver. You know what? No, I'm taking him off because they shouldn't. Oh, do it. they shouldn't do it. They should do it. <laughs> saving him for himself. Um, I just don't think. Okay, fine. No, I'll put him back up. Sorry, because I want to make it go. interesting. I don't think. I don't love this value for them. Uh, just also. It's not just I love Thomas Jr. as a player. I do think like they need a different kind of skill set in that yeah. offense. But he is, I think, the best receiver available. Uh, and then I'm gonna put Terry and Arnold because cornerback is another need for them. I get what you need, because like they need a Z, not an X. And Thomas yeah. projects as an X, even though he moves different. I saw someone compare him to T. Higgins. I didn't like that. Going with Terry and Arnold though. Okay. I want to build up that corner room. Enough with this kind of Joey Porter Jr. was a standout player last year as a rookie get the other corner over there. Now you don't have to hodgepodge this position like the Steelers have feel like they've done for years and years and years. Uh, so now we get some two talented corners with some pedigree. I'd really like that. Arnold matches the Steelers mindset too. He plays a slot. He's feisty, smart, like kind of, yeah, feels like a Steelers corner. I, I, I actually really like that pairing because I did it. That's why I like it. <laughs> Just pat myself on the back. <laughs> Listen, that's okay. We're, we're, it's a collaborative process. Um, okay. This is yeah, no, yeah. Good selection. Good menu, GM. I'm going to put for the Dolphins. I'm going to put two offensive linemen on the oh, board. Thank God. <laughs> they need it. Well, they need offensive line and IDL, and they're the IDL, two IDL guys got left. So, or we've already taken them. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I'm putting back Graham Barton and Tyler Guyton. Very different players. Yes. Serving very different needs. Which one yes. would you take if you're the Dolphins? Going Barton. Uh, Graham Barton, Duke, super high on him anyways. My their 12th player on my big board, which I'm super high. His biggest knocks on him were length and like athleticism stuff. And this guy tests like a monster athlete and his arms are plenty long. I think he has four position upside, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. Dolphins need offensive linemen just wherever <laughs> you know Armstead's can probably move on after this year but yeah they just needed tons and tons of tons of help up there he's he would be great uh in a kind of a zone system even if the Dolphins do a whole bunch of stuff but I'd actually really like Barton with the Dolphins I like Barton with just about everybody anybody listen to our pod I've just been getting made fun of for the past two weeks because I just keep pairing Barton with everybody um okay so the Eagles are an interesting position Corner is an uh, obvious need. Everybody is giving them cornerbacks, so I'm going to put up a corner, Nate Wiggins. I'm going to throw back a too, though. Oh. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Hassan Reddick. Yes, they have Edge. They acquired Bryce Huff, mm-hmm. Josh Wett, but we know that they love Edge depth, and right now they don't have a lot of, if, assuming they trade Reddick, they don't have a lot of Edge depth, and they love drafting in the trenches. Do you go they for do. need? Or do you go for? Uh, I gave them verse recently. Uh, I'm going to go with the edge. I'm going to go with Latu. I so they 
Howie Roseman kind of has a type in early rounds, usually trenches, yeah. uh, receiver, quarterback. Those are kind of the things. We keep mentioning corner, but the Eagles haven't drafted a corner in the first round since Lito yeah, Shepard in 2002. It, but it's like I keep hearing it, and I, we even it. talked about it, and I keep looking back. I'm like, when was the last corner they took? And I was like, what was how he was rolled then? Was he like assistant, like salary cap manager or something like that at that point? So I don't does he listen to the show. Hopefully he's not making fun. But they, but anyways, this, uh, but I think with Latu is exactly what you said. I, I kind of like verse maybe because I don't know what they're doing with sweat. I don't know what they're doing with Reddick or anything, but um, I, yeah, like you said, they just like to churn away talent and just have talent and inject talent and pedigree into those trench positions, which I, I like that team building philosophy. So that's where I'm going to go with. Okay. So uh, this is for the Patriots, I'm actually happy because I'm still trying to draft offensive linemen, even though we already took one. Mm-hmm. Um, but Brian Thomas is still there, and you desperately <laughs> easy easy Brian yeah. Thomas sprinting up there over Tyler Guyton there. Yeah, Brian Thomas receiver juice. Yeah, Tyler Guyton speed speed speed. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you want. Just outside speed. That's that's gonna be much better. Go throw it, Jacoby. Yeah, <laughs> launch right. it up to him. <laughs> I mean. I feel like that would be a pretty good outcome for it would. Yeah. I mean, that's ideal. Like that's we've got the, Hey, what position should we go for? All right. We knocked out two of them. And Thomas is, I mean, there's the big three at receiver, but Thomas kind of is in a tier of his own. Like he's kind of receiver four for just, I mean, no one really has flaked off that from as far as what I've seen. Um, and from what I've heard, kind of talked to Dane has some sources too on our show, Dane Brugler. And he, Mentioned that, yeah, four, he's the fourth guy for just about every board he's talked to. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this would be a great spot for him and everything. All right. Dallas uh, offensive line is the biggest need. Leaving Guyton up, I'm going to put up JPJ because oh. center uh, Tyler Biotish yes. has moved on. He is yes. the consensus best center in the draft. He is very fun to watch. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm, Who would you I'm going to, yeah, JPJ, Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah. A lot of attitude there. He's kind of a bull in a china shop as a blocker right now because he he's just an athlete that's learning to play center, like as opposed to usually centers are the worst athletes. And then it's like, we got to get him on the field because they're smart. He's like opposite what we usually see at center. It's like, we got to get this athlete on the field and use him as a weapon. He has no, like he's just figuring out the position. But like you said, one of the most fun watches in the whole draft, he like sprints to beat people on screens. He's like, he like cheers on his running backs, like wh- which lane they should go into. Just a really fun player. So yeah, I like JPJ a lot there. The Packers at 25. Okay, so the Packers are like, we didn't come into this thinking edge, but Jared Verse is still there, y'all. Yeah. So he, we're putting him on our board. However, offensive line is probably a bigger need, so I'm leaving Guyton up. Who are you taking? I'm, I'm still going Guyton for them. Guyton. I, I know, but Ver- that's tough. I just think that they've invested in defense. Maybe, okay, we got... Van Ness and everything like that. Okay, we take away reps for him. Not sure. Maybe the four down defense might, you know, that little defensive shift might new, new defensive coordinator, Jeff Happy. Yep. Hey, I want my four three guy as opposed to my, you know, yes. maybe outside linebacker type. That is a total possibility. I just think that they are trying to inject some talent to their offensive line, even though they have such a great kind of factory going on of these mid round guys, really getting that tackle with some pedigree that they can really just inject on there. I I I kind of Guyton's an interesting player because he's more of a project, but he has a lot of tools. Well, I think this is an absolute dream for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because Jared Verse is still there. Yeah. I am putting up Nate Wiggins, uh, the cornerback out of Clemson, as an alternative, another position that they need to address. Yes. A, a player I, who, by the way, I think would be a very good fit like, for the Bulls defense, too. Yeah, and I like what? I had, I think I had Wiggins in the mock recently, but I'm going to go Verse here. This is just more talent and everything. A dream. Even though, the Bucks nailed last year's draft. They got a couple of really talented guys, and they, yeah, they have an interesting. The, yeah, the Bucks are just such an interesting team. They're just such a weird team because they have so much talent everywhere. But I have no idea how to feel about them. Uh, but yeah, I like that. Just inject even more. I gotta stop saying inject. It's okay. Plop, plop more defensive line talent onto their already talented young defensive line. There we go. Okay, so the Arizona Cardinals stuck. Remember, they did not trade, so they picked at four. Right. And they, we, we stuck yep. with Marvin Harrison Jr. because mm-hmm. the Chargers were the ones who took the uh, trade package. Um, I think this would be awesome for them, the, just how things have played out. Um, yeah. Well, let me throw in a little mm. bit of a curveball for you. Mm. I'll just, 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 just hear me out here. Uh, <laughs> here we okay. Are. So they have needs across the defense. Mm-hmm. So I'm leaving Wiggins up the corner who I like 
I'm gonna. This is my first landing spot for Chop oh, Robinson at Edge. Edge is very yeah. much so also a need. Yeah, that's. Tough. I'm. I'm actually going Chop Robinson. It, it's yeah. That's that's tough. Really? <laughs> but they they need they need talent. I think, yes. and I think they're gonna they're gonna be a trench first team as well. Um, just uh, based on their what the GM's kind of been doing. Uh, Wiggins, I have higher on my board though. Having said that, uh, I think they're kind of the same range, but I think this is more of a guy get some juice some miss some talent. I have some knocks on chop. Uh, I'm not as high as some people are on him, but I think he also brings some to the table. Not a lot, not a lot of guys in this class do. Uh, he's the, like, it could be amazing. Could be Probably. great. Uh, yeah. Or he's, he's only playing 15 snaps a game and, yeah. and they're not very pretty. He's not okay. a finisher and guys that don't finish. I'm kind of always a little hesitant on I, dream outcome for the Buffalo bills because two needs, two good players, Nate Wiggins still oh, there. Stuff. AD Mitchell entered the chat. Oh, my receiver, oh, Texas, oh, true X. Oh, AD Mitchell. <laughs> That's for fancy booking. <laughs> yeah why not big body mitchell rocks i uh yeah he's he's a guy that's really grown on me in the process testing helps definitely but his tape is a lot of fun a lot of yeah i know you hate fades goal line fades if you're throwing ad mitchell i might be okay with them because he can dunk on some guys and i, I just want to see this type of receiver with josh allen i want to see a big you know stefan Diggs is his own kind of thing I want to see that big ball winner on the outside that Josh can maybe just rip it to, and he can take the top off the defense. So Mitchell can be frustrating at times, but man, he is so talented, and I'm I'm willing to bet on the upside. Well, I think Wiggins has been dropping. I oh, man. suspect his drop will fall here. I'm gonna give. I need to give I'm you a fun, it. spicy alternative. Um, I'm not seeing any many players that I like more than him. Uh, oh, I know you like this player. Oh, God. Okay, so it's the Detroit Lions. Yes. We're leaving Wiggins. <laughs> oh, uh, I see what you did there. Uh, and I'm adding Kingsley Suomatia out of BYU. BYU. Offensive yeah. line depth is something that they love to add in Detroit. I didn't know you were going to make it this hard. That's tough. And because Wiggins is like ideal, like personality fit, maybe for them too. Wiggins. Like, so I'm gonna go Wiggins just to make it easy. <laughs> you gotta remember, I, I, you know, my dad was the guy in charge when the Vikings missed a draft pick. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of we run, we run the maximum yeah, maximum time on the clock uh, when we're doing these things. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Wiggins, Twitchy. I'm with you. I. The Wayne was a little scary for me, but man, he moves differently. He's just so twitchy. He can stay sticky on guys. They play a lot of man coverage. I actually would really like that there. So, and and they just they need they need corners. Even if they you know traded for Carlton Davis and stuff, they still need stuff there. They still need town on the back end. For the Ravens, oh yeah, I gave them. I'm going to throw up a different player. I gave them McConkey once at 30. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put Troy Franklin uh, out of Whoa. Oregon. Uh, but then I'm going to keep Sue Matia on the board. Uh, offensive line is very much a need for this team. Yeah, I, I'm going Kingsley, Sue Matia. And that's actually a guy I've kind of mocked perfectly to there uh, a few times. Uh, yeah, upside for him. He's a guy that this is kind of how I've kind of described him. Of the project he tackles him, Tyler Guyton, Patrick Paul is a little later in this draft, but those types of players that these guys would usually go like before 20 in a normal draft, because we don't usually see this much tackle talent, <laughs> like high end and kind of, like they're more of the project types that teams kind of reach on. Like these guys have better tape and similar athleticism to, again, I'll mention them for a second time, Trevor Penning, who went in the teens a few years ago. So it's, that's what's interesting. But Kingsley, I think it has real left tackle upside, even if it might take some time to get there. Then I, I have not been keeping track of the number of tackles we've drafted, but it is this. I think we, I'm pretty sure we've broken a record for offensive line in the draft. I think we got eight, nine, yeah. potentially 10. Well, we did Guyton, we did Guyton too, right? You know who who's bummed about that? This next team, the San Francisco 49ers. Cause I'm looking, yeah. I'm like, who would I, I'll put Morgan up. Okay. Uh, Jordan Morgan out of, I love uh, Kingsley for them Arizona. too. That's like, that's like a, a great landing spot for them. And then too. I'm 
threw up Troy Franklin because uh, they can't. Maybe they can't pay two wide receivers, and they got to move oh. on for Brandon Ayuk or Debo, one of the two. I'm gonna go Jordan Morgan. Okay. Uh, it, it's a little rich, but I, I like him. In this this is where his range starts. Tackle guard, what is he? Not sure, but we can start him somewhere, uh, and he can move. I actually like him best for a zone team like this, even if Shannon's doing different stuff now. He he can move how like, how they like. They prefer their offense alignment. Um, yeah, I think he could just be a good solid starter somewhere. Like this is where I, I've really slotted him to the Dolphins for some reason. I don't know why, but he keeps kind of just I'm picturing that one a lot. But yeah, like that one. All right. Finally, one well, that's not finally because we're gonna do a bonus pick. But the Kansas oh, yeah. City Chiefs are picking uh, at the end. You could go offensive tackle. You could go corner. You could go wide receiver. I'm gonna give you uh, one option of the latter two categories. I'm gonna keep Troy Franklin on the board, uh, and I'm gonna throw in. Cooley McKinstry, the cornerback out of Alabama. Ooh, I'm going to go Troy Franklin. Same kind of thing. Talking about the Bills is I, I want to see Patrick Mahomes with a ball winner. <laughs> That's what Troy Franklin is. Another guy is way and scare me a little bit, but I heard he was sick at the combine. I don't know. Dog A's homework. I don't know if it's one of those, but we'll see. I He grew on me the more I watched him. Like he, I thought he was going to be just kind of twitchy, little skinny X type, but he moves well. He's a frisky blocker. Like he really tries at it. Like really tries in the run game. Even if he's a skinnier type, he's good in the red zone. I kind of like it, especially pairing him with Rasheed Rice, who's more of a Z. Travis Kelsey is going to move on. I, yeah, I kind of like the pairing there and the type of player there. Okay, so the Carolina Panthers. This is the final pick. We are doing this as a bonus uh, fan service to the Carolina fans <laughs> out there. Um, and to that end, I do think that you you really do have to consider. A lot of positions, edge, corner, obviously, but I am going to throw up two receivers instead. Uh, I am prioritizing. Okay, no, I'm, I am prior. This is. <laughs> I, I the first pick. I mean, one of these I really, 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 really like for Carolina. The other oh one? yeah. Can you guess who it is? No, I'm trying to think. It, it, it's not. Is it? This one edge. It's not no. Keon Coleman, right? No. Uh, okay. no. We are not no. taking receivers who struggle with separation. That's what um, I was going to say. I was like, please uh, don't do that to me. Like, cause no, I, mean, yeah. I am. We we spent a lot on the offensive line. I am throwing up. Yeah. There, yeah. One of it, these it, is probably too high. Uh, okay, Ricky. Oh, why'd you go these two, huh? Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, Lad Lad. We have Lad McConkie and Ricky Pearsall, who are receivers who have something in common, but. Uh, yeah, uh, they both they both play in the SEC. Uh, yeah. They both play in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. I am going to go with Lad. I love, love Lad. I, I, love, would, I would love this as a love Lad. Team. Yes, yes. This Separation. Is Lad, yes. Play, and he he's getting pigeonholed as just a slot guy. He plays outside. Like he's an outside receiver. Um, actually, yeah, I started comparing him to Manuel Sanders a little bit. Sanders had a little longer arms. But kind of that little undersized guy that go outside too. He's awesome. He's such a good route runner. He's got so much juice. Big fan. Hey, Lenny. That was the other complaint I got that Lenny wasn't appearing enough on the podcast. So, okay. uh, Hey, Lenny. uh, Next time. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the entire first round. I thought it was super spicy. I love the trades that we did. Let me know if you're watching this on YouTube in the comments. If you agree, as you can see, I take feedback uh, as we're doing these trades. Um, and if anything, if nothing else, you learned how to pronounce the name of that BYU tackle who I, Shumatatia, Shumatatia. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah. That's the great Nate Tice, who you can find <laughs> on Twitter at Nate underscore Tice or, uh, at the <laughs> athletic football show. Thank you so much, bud. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Lenny. 